Hello and welcome to a new video about measurements. This time we are talking about, uh, at first glance, a very ancient thing. Yeah? But I'm going to tell it anyway, uh, because with our nowadays possibilities, we use it, well, we have some effects which uh, are similar to what I am going to explain now. I'm going to explain now a so-called line writer. Okay, so in former times, let's call them former times, uh, maybe you see it once uh, there and now, yeah, we have a strip of paper somewhere. And at this strip of paper, there is a line drawn. Mm -hmm. Paper strip, there is a line drawn of some measured value. Here we have a line and this line is showing somehow the history of this value. Huh? So here we can read what is at a certain time, here what value we have got later in time, here what value we have got later in time and so on. So we have recorded, we have recorded the history. Uh, with the record the history of a signal and there, it's a stripe of paper and this paper is moving forward with a certain speed uh, and somewhere I have a pen, a pointer a pen which is going up and down and putting this line to the paper and then I see the history I can record this is a recording device right so I'll try to show it somewhere. Yeah, so here is the paper. This is where the paper stream comes from. And this is the history of our signal. And somewhere we have the pen, which is drawing this line, right? So it should be three D. Yeah. So, and actually, it's working pretty much the same. We have somewhere a measurement yeah, sensor, Sensor. Then we have somewhere our amplifier, measurement amplifier. And then we have an additional amplifier which is powerful enough to drive the, the axis of this of this pen, right? So here we have an additional amplifier which is driving the motor or the drive of, of this device. So here tuck. it's already part of the part of the registration device, uh, processing device. This is why I draw it blue. Right? And this this paper is moving in this direction forward, so we will draw this line. Yeah, and we have here some certain V. Yeah, this can be very small. Yeah, and maximum was around seven meters per second. So, well, well, this is already pretty much. So, the faster I'm moving, yeah, the more dynamic things I can record with a reasonable resolution. This is. This is how this was working, right? Of course, if I have only one line, I have only one line. But if I want to record more, yeah, I could do it like that. I'm dividing my 
paper strip in two different areas. Here I'm recording one quantity, one measurement, yeah? and the other quantity I'm recording in the other area. Yeah? Then I have no issue at all. Right? The only thing I'm losing here is resolution. Yeah? Because I had now the paper strip has a certain width, yeah? and this width is now divided into two. And so I'm losing simply resolution of my devices. So I could also say I use the full paper strip for both. Okay, so here I have a second signal, and this is now recorded like over the other signal, like it would be there. Yeah. So here we have this, and here I have an issue. Yeah? Because of course I cannot do both both bands at the same location, so I have to move this one band. Yeah, because they maybe maybe cross each other, yeah? so I have the second pen. And here, since they are separated, physically separated from the location, I have some delta t, which is not really there. It is not really there, but because this is later in time, the green one is later in time, yeah? because the paper which is now here need some time to go to here, yeah? so have some, uh, apparently some time difference. And I need to cope with this time difference. I cannot accept this time difference. Yeah? I cannot have every line at a, at a, a different uh, time index. This would be stupid. Yeah? So I have to store the measured value somehow. Yeah? And this would make those two things um, more expensive, simply. Right? So, this is why some of the devices only supported these type, yeah? because here I have no issue. Here I can drive my pen at the same position, they will never cross each other. Yeah, like always, yeah? the better the solution, they were more expensive. There was not only line writers, a thing which uh, did also solve this was a point printer. Yeah? Point printer. I will do it, I don't know, here with this the type of color point printer. This point printer is not really drawing a line. It only makes an indication at certain point in times. Yeah? periodic points in times, make, make some point, yeah? indicate only at certain point in times. Yeah? So we could use here some symbol and maybe here another symbol. Here it printed an O, here it printed an X, for instance, yeah? and then we have two symbol chains of symbols, yeah? and we I have I don't have this yeah? because it makes it and then it drives to the other one, puck, and it drives to this one, puck, drives to this one, puck, and make always those. This is a point printer. It solves this issue as well. However, yeah? what is in between the points here? I cannot imagine if. Uh, I would I would assume it's going like that, but here, in reality, I made this little bend. Uh, the more measurements I have, uh, the, the more accurate it is, of course. Uh, but I might be missing something if I only look at certain times. There's a point printer. And then we have some alarm printer. Uh, Let's say here is somewhere a level where it's getting dangerous for the green line. 
right? Then here we would indicate an alarm. Hey, the, the temperature has reached maximum level or is beyond maximum level. Yeah? Only prints events. And these events can be defined. Yeah? Might be an alarm yeah? or might be also some just a limit, yeah, operational limit. You say, okay, now we are we are in an operational area. Yeah? You can start the next step yeah? here, for instance. Yeah? So those those are called alarm printers. Where called alarm printers would be actually the better way. Yeah? Because, of course, of course, if you build nowadays, if you build a new registration device, you're not building a line writer somewhere in some paper, yeah? maybe in some special occasions, all right. Yeah? But the usual way is not to have a line writer. What is usual? Usually, we store the measured values in the database. Yeah? But how, why, why I have told you this? Huh? Because I wanted you to understand the difference between a point printer and a line writer. Huh? Because, like I said, we have a difference here. And if we are storing values in a database, it works pretty much like the point printer, the point writer. Huh? Because I only have one entry at a time. I do not have a line. I do not have the full recording. I only have well, entry, 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 entry at certain points in time. And what happened between those entries, I cannot really tell. All right? Depends a little bit on how sophisticated those values are stored. But you know, that's an issue, usually. That's an issue because if you see somewhere spikes or something like that, you might not see them. Yeah. Also, point printer and alarm printer, they are pretty much combined. Yeah. So there is, there is this data storage of the measured values, and then there is also a storage of message, message storage. Yeah. But not only alarms are in there, there are also operational messages like I'm turning on now, on now this and that bump and so on. So you have a full protocol of what happened in your in our automation system. But the measurement part of these automation things is storing those values in some sort of database. Yeah. I write it now. Storing measured values in some database. I will also write only at certain points in time. The value is stored. Same issue Then with point printer, yeah, that we might have these. Yeah. Make a right here. Make a reference. Here. Okay. This. We cannot tell really. Line writer. Yeah. So now I think you understand why I told you what a line writer is, how it worked to, to tell you the difference to a point printer. And you know, if we measure very often and store very often, then it's usually okay. 
Yeah. However, this needs data data storage space simply. Yeah. If I'm storing too much values and it's not really changing, it would be stupid. Yeah. So there I have to think about techniques how I can maybe I not, don't store it uh, periodically, but only on some trigger levels changes or something like that. Yeah. Then yeah. so th there are things out there yeah, which are more sophisticated than that. But like I said, we have this issue. We might have this issue. Okay, so now we know how we measure, how a measurement system usually works, what is static behavior, what is dynamic behavior, what errors we can expect, uh, what, uh, how to connect sensors, uh, how to measure uh, electrical quantities, how to measure, uh, yeah, how to register, how to display. And now we simply look into different types of sensors. Yeah, or measurement devices and have a look how they are working. Okay? The first measurement device, it's usually not associated, associated with measurement, it switches. Yeah? However, it's some sort of measurement if something is there or not. Yeah? So, we are talking about switches next time. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.